So I thought this week I'd give you a fast picking exercise um, based on a concept that I call spirals. So what do I mean by a spiral? Well, all a spiral is, to me, is just a scale fragment that loops back on itself, but instead of staying in one place, it ascends or descends down a scale, creating that kind of spiral effect. But they do have some nice little characteristics to them as well, if you, depending on how you construct them. And one of them is that they do tend to bring out chord tones. So even though it's a scalar line, it has an innate harmony in it as well, as I'll, as I'll try and demonstrate. So how do you create a spiral then? So all I do when I create them is I start with a single static line that I can loop. So something that I can move in a circular direction, and it doesn't really matter what it is. And once I've got that line created, I start offsetting it by, by a note. So what I try not to do is to repeat a note anywhere in the, in the scale fragment. And what that does is it offsets a phrase by two notes every time. And because it's offsetting by two notes every time, you tend to find that you're landing on chord tones all the time, which is why I like to, why I like to use these over a harmony. So let me see if I can demonstrate this. Let's zoom in. So you can use any scales for these at all, but I thought uh, I'd use the G B bop major scale as I spoke about this last week. So if this is a new scale to you, then please check my, my video that I put up last week that talks about this, talks about where, why it was invented, how, how to finger it and all the positions going up the neck. But what I'll do is I'll just stay in this position around the 12th fret, looks like this. Okay. And what this will do is create a line that will fit over an E minor type uh, key signature or even E blues or it will fit over G major as well. And the, the looping pattern I'm going to work with is a really simple one, it's just this. So hopefully you can see all I'm doing is ascending in a, a group of four notes and then I start the descent from the next note up. What that does is it creates a line that starts from an E and then the descent starts from a B. So it's out outlining the root and the fifth of an E minor chord. So what I'm going to do though, instead of just staying in one place, when I play that last, last note, instead of dropping back to the E, I'm going to move up to the G. And then from there, I'll move up to the B. So hopefully you can see what's going on there. But what that's actually doing is it's outlining the, the chord tones of the E minor seventh, if you can see that. So what I'm doing is E to B, G, D, Turning this round is, is pretty much doing the same thing. So instead of reaching up to the high note after I've played my first group of four, I start from the next note down. So hopefully you can see it's still outlining those same notes from that to seventh arpeggio. So hopefully that's demonstrated how the spirals work. You can see that the spiral itself, the, the repeated pattern or offsetting that circular line emphasizes every other note of the scale and in this case because I'm using the bebop major scale the harmony is nice and static so I'm emphasizing in this case it's uh, an E minor, G major, E blues type sound. So give it a try yourself, see how you get on and we'll chat next time.